just say this with me. Lord, I receive what you want to tell me today. Let me leave here changed, more like you than when I walked in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so last week, I told you, was the greatest day in the history of the world. We, we, not that day, but we, what we celebrated on that day was the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Whether you agree with me or not, it's still true. <laughs> it's the greatest thing that ever happened. Because you could argue the worst thing that ever happened is when Adam and Eve fell in the garden because they were in perfect relationship with God, right? And then when they fell, they got separated from God. They got evicted. I, I forgot. They lost their welcome. <laughs> So we want to be welcomed by God, but sin separated them from God. And that's what I used this stool was, was when they were in the garden with God and everything was perfect, they were naked and, and unafraid and unashamed. And they lost that, and everything got turned upside down. And then we go through all of the books of the Old Testament after Genesis until Jesus comes, and then he says, you know what, I'm going to live my life for the 33 years and not sin. Even though I was tempted in every way, just like all of us are tempted, I'm going to make it all 33 years. So the first man that was made from dirt sinned and defiled us because we're all made from dirt too. You know that, right? Except the women are made from men, but we won't go into that. <laughs> and then another person made from the dirt, right? Jesus was a human being too. And he lived for 33 years without sinning. So when he died, he became the replacement of the first Adam. See, that's why it's so crucial that he rose from the dead because Paul says it. If, if Christ didn't rise, your faith is futile. Wow. But so many of us were taught, and rightly so, to focus on the cross because without him dying on the cross, then, we're, then our sins are not forgiven. But if he didn't rise from the dead, the death on the cross wouldn't have mattered. He only defeated death when he came out of the tomb. All right? So I don't know if you got the picture, right? And this was a, the word the Lord gave me is that we are the returning remnant, and we're going to rule and reign forever. Okay? Those are both Bible scriptures, one from Isaiah 7, 3. It's the only place in the Bible that that phrase exists is the returning remnant. But, I, again, I'm, the best thing that could happen for me today, just in the time that I have left, is that you leave here aiming higher for what the Lord wants. Because every day when you wake up, you need a motivation to move you, right? And Holy Spirit is a fuel for your engine. So this side over here is kind of the picture that the Lord gave me of what we're in now. Because post-resurrection, we all have Holy Spirit. The Bible says that you can't say yes to Jesus unless Holy Spirit is residing in you. And there was that whole problem where people said, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel really bad about that. It's, you know, in Corinthians, it says, when you speak in tongues, you're speaking to God. Use that as your motive to just ask the Lord, I want to speak to you more clearly. Help me. We'll lay hands on you. We'll, we'll, we'll pray over you. But don't turn that into this big divisive thing. Amen? Nobody's better than anybody else here. We're all trying the best we can. But so the difference here is now that we're saved, we have a nature. He, came, he comes in, and we are born again, and he's the king. But we, we have this black part of our nature that still tries to live. Am I the only one? Let's be honest. Paul said, I'm such a wreck. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing. And that was Paul. Well, why would we be any different, right? I have not yet arrived, he said. So it's, it's our ability to let this go and let this win. There's a yielding process that happens. And this could be our emotions. This could be our habits. And, and when you're away from God and you're not praying and you're not reading the word and you go further and further into your flesh because our flesh wasn't fully crucified when we got saved, it still tries to resurrect. So we have to live a life that's yielded to God. Start on your knees every morning. Take communion next to your bed and say, Lord, I need your help today. I don't know what's coming, but I know the enemy wants to take me out. There was so much warfare this morning over our sound system and over the uh, internet connection and all kinds of things. So eventually, this part of our flesh could get so big that it blocks out the king. But what does he want? 
just complete interaction with us every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, month, year, till you're gone. And hopefully you want to die with your boots on. Yeah. Right? Our friend Peter Wagner that uh, was already quoted here, I, I was uh, privileged to do a chapter in the last book that he wrote. And the quote that I started with was, he was 80 years old when he, when he wrote it. And he said, he came to realize that the word emeritus you know what that is at a college when they say you're a professor emeritus? He said, that means rocking chair in the Greek. <laughs> and he said, he, didn't, he was kidding. But he wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to sit in a rocking chair now that he was emeritus. He said, I'd much rather be in an airplane seat working on my next million miles than in a rocking chair reminiscing about all the good things that happened. No, we don't ever have to stop serving the Lord. And in many ways, we should become more and more effective the older we get and the more mature we get and the more we have to keep crucifying this black thing that wants to keep rising up in us. No, let go. See, that was prophetic. <laughs> don't, don't be uh, afraid to admit that that dark side can rise up very quickly. And on, on emotions, or if there's a root, and you know that we do deliverance here, and you know that many of us had trauma in our lives, and, and an open door to trauma came in, and, and something tries to still hold on to us, and it's alive the enemy that you can't change. But you can change. How many in here have experienced some change in ministry, and, and, and it really is a new life? It's not like it's your willpower that got you to stop. Nobody's got enough willpower to stop. It's God power working against the will and winning over our will. And we yield and we say, oh, Lord, it's all about you. Yeah. Got to be. Nobody can get up on our high horse and say, we've got all the answers and we've arrived. Okay? With me? So I'll just go quickly. Um, we got to honor the word. Ephesians 1, 13 says, your lives are marked with his seal. That was everything that was talked about, about Holy Spirit today. You know, and I'll just give you a little history, right? So he, um, David, when he was up here, talked about Peter Wagner saying 17 signs of things that he caused a paradigm shift. He was against the Holy Spirit. He taught against it. He wrote books against it, okay? And then he completely shifted and realized it was true. That takes a lot of humility. And one of the things people would say is, well, but the people in your church, they're just out of control. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. And that wasn't decent and in order. I got hit by somebody with a flag, All right, well, I don't want that. That's not okay. Nobody wants to get hit with a flag, but sometimes, like, if you knew the story of the person who was waving the flag and how God has delivered them out of the pit of hell, you might have a little more compassion. It's not okay to get hit with the flag. That's not okay. We're not going to throw them out of the church, probably, unless it keeps happening. But we tend to say decently and in order should be the focus, but what about let all things be done? And what about if you're not comfortable yet, just keep your eyes closed and stop judging the person in the front. Well, that wasn't in the spirit. That was in their flesh. Guess whose job that is? Mine and Trisha's. And if you know Trisha, she won't mind telling you that that, that wasn't the way we want to do it here. But she won't do it in a way where you'll walk away with a welt. She's, she's operating for your good. For your good, right? This is all to help us mature. How can you help people grow in the spirit and expect them to be perfect in the growth pattern? They're not. They're going to make mistakes. But we're willing to work with you in the mistakes because we all still make them too. Nobody fully arrives. Just different kinds of mistakes, okay? So your lives are marked with his seal, none other than the Holy Spirit who was promised as the guarantee towards the inheritance. Now let me just finish the story again here, Katie. So... They were perfect in the garden. They flipped upside down through sin. Jesus came and allows us to live in this period between his resurrection and his return. And you all believe he's going to return for good. We can argue about a thousand years, pre-trip, post-trip. Let's just focus on the return, the final return of Revelation chapter 22. He's coming back. We can have that, this says in Ephesians. We've got a taste of what that will be like now, only partial. It's a down payment. But you can increase the value of that down payment by leaning into what the Spirit of God is trying to say, not what some man is trying to manipulate you into, 
what the Spirit is saying. And if you're not sure about hearing the voice of the Lord, ask people to pray for you that you trust. And if you trust that they know how to hear the voice of the Lord. And I learned the hard way that my wife knew how to hear the voice of the Lord because we would disagree about things in the beginning. And she'd say, I have a check about that. Where do you put the check on the spreadsheet? You need a reason on the spreadsheet. Well, you got to give me more than that. What do you mean you got a check? That doesn't even make sense to your logical mind. She's like, I don't know. I just prayed, and I got a check about it. And she'd be right. I mean, how many black and blue lumps on your head do you need before you start to recognize maybe there's more to this than just logic? So that's this pressing into Holy Spirit, not to do weird things, but to just do what he's asking you to do, even when it seems like that's not what you would have done. So this is, this is where it all comes down to us every morning when we're waking up, is how, are we, how much of this battle between our body, our spirit, our flesh winning versus what the king of kings wants to do in our heart, right? So the ultimate goal is not only will we have everything that Adam and Eve had back in the garden, we're going to have new bodies called 2.0 version of our body. Much like Jesus, when he came back, right, there was those 40 days that he appeared to so many different people, and they didn't always recognize him when they saw him. So there was something different. When he went to see the disciples in the upper room, he just walked through the wall. But yet he ate. And when they were walking on the road to Emmaus, they didn't re realize it was him. And then all of a sudden, they said, didn't our hearts burn after he disappeared? Didn't our hearts burn? Well, you and I could be those people to the world. If we're yielding to who's already in us, there's an essence in us that is contagious to other people. And you can't have to think that you're going to understand every single thing that, that the Lord asks you to do. He's trusting you like Peter. Step out of the boat. Come to me. I don't know how that's going to work. Well, try it. Anybody here walk on, even take one step on the water? You could criticize Peter for falling, but you never even took one step. <laughs> Guaranteed towards the inheritance. What's the inheritance I'm sorry to say, most Christians would say, when you die, you go to heaven. That's a good inheritance, isn't it? All I'm saying is aim higher. Because dying and go to heaven doesn't include ruling and reigning with Christ in a 2.0 body for eternity. And I'm much more motivated by that than dying and going to heaven, as great as that is. It's true. It's just not the whole story. Okay? With me? Say yes and it'll go well. We are going to have fellowship in the uh, commons today. Not only in this age that we're here, right? This age with this in-between waiting, but in the age to come. That's important language, isn't it? So he hasn't fully come back yet, but he's partially come back and he's present in his people. And we cause change in the culture when we yield to him and allow him to operate in us. And then this same thing in Luke 18, it says this present time, and in the age to come, eternal life. Okay, so if dying and going to heaven means you live on a cloud with a harp somewhere, we're contradicting scripture because that's not the end. Dying and playing a harp on a cloud is just this disembodied picture. You're going to get a new body when he comes back. And if you can just focus on that, like what a great reason to get up every morning and serve the Lord because we're we're saying, Lord, while we're here, we want to have the biggest impact. We want to destroy the works of the devil while we're here because the day is going to come when we can't do that anymore. Peter, Peter Wagner passed, and, and he's resting now, waiting for the return to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to have an office. We don't know exactly what that looks like, but there's some hints in Scripture. Someday I'll get that. Not today. <laughs> I'm really summarizing quickly. All right, there it is. If the Messiah is not risen, your faith is worthless. That's verse 14. And then 17 in the same chapter. If the Messiah has not been raised, your faith is worthless. And you are still imprisoned in your sin. What? If you don't believe Jesus fully resurrected, you're still in your sin. What? He died on the cross for my sins. Yes, but he was resurrected to defeat death. The sin came when death came in the garden when they sinned. There was no death back here. And they didn't die when they ate the fruit, but they did die. They weren't supposed to ever die. Wow, think about all the death to relationships that sin causes. Let's skip ahead. So, turning remnant, reigning forever. I'm almost done. 
We heard inheritance, not just dying and going to heaven, but ruling and reigning with him forever. Check. You good? Right. Aim higher. There's an age that we're in, and then there's an age to come. We do the best we can with the power and the word of God and scripture and being in fellowship with each other and holding each other accountable. And if you really love somebody, you want to tell them the truth. But you want to do it in love, not because you're better than them. But because if we're not all operating at full potential, then all of us are hurting. If there's a great skill and gift in you that's being held back by the enemy, I'm hurt by that. Because the more people that are operating at full capacity, the stronger we all are. Right? So why wouldn't we want to help you? Oh, well, you don't come to our church, so you can't get ministry. You're not a member. Come on. You imagine Jesus saying that? The just exact opposite. They said to him, oh, well, we saw somebody casting out demons, but they weren't part of us, so we set the stop. Keep your demons. Think about it. What did he say? No. If they're not against us, they're for us. So stop criticizing other churches, please. <laughs> then he talked about eternal life, the resurrection. No resurrection means you're still bound by your sin. And then he used this language that we're reborn into a living hope. I'll get there someday. Eternal inheritance that's held in reserve in heaven. Oh, man, I love that. This eternal inheritance that we have, this ruling and reigning forever with Christ is just waiting for him to come back and we are going to rule and reign with him forever. It's held in reserve in heaven. <clears throat> and I'm going to be busy while I'm here. And then we'll all come full circle when this age ends. So this could help maybe. Aim higher for your eternal inheritance, okay? So say it with me. Aim higher for your eternal inheritance. So we know hell is not the option. <laughs> no way do we want to let that be our eternal inheritance, okay? And don't worry too much about people you know that when they died, maybe they, you thought they weren't saved, but don't, don't busy your mom with that stuff because you don't know if they called out to God. The thief on the cross never went to church, never read the Bible, right? right? He, today you'll be with me in paradise. So be careful that you don't already judge. And the people you think are guaranteed to be there may not be there. Whatever. You only worry about yourself. Be like Jesus more and more every day. But then, you know, like, you find people that Lance Wall now talked when we were out in California. And he said there's so many of these unbelievers that are coming to the political rallies that he and Mario Murillo were doing. 2,500 people out of 12,000 came up for the altar call in Oklahoma this week. Right? Like, they couldn't get to the altar. There were so many people that came to a political rally, but they heard the truth. And they couldn't resist stepping in. Amazing, right? But there could also be a Christian who's backslidden. And this, again, boy, if you think it's condemning, don't take it that way. It's not about being condemning. It's about lighting the fire again. Right? Light the fire inside your heart again. Whatever that takes. Get prayer. Get ministry. We can all get sluggish. We can all get de what, derailed by some terrible thing that happens that we weren't expecting. But don't stay there. That's where the devil wants you. Take your life. There's too much pain. No. Choose life. Choose life. And if you see people hurting, reach out to them. And then how about this version of Christianity? Well, I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. He can't take it away from me. That's aiming way too low, okay? Well, yeah, I mean, I was kind of Googling that girl, like, uh, what, what, what would the, oogling? I don't even remember what that word, but, like, looking at her the wrong way, but we didn't have sex. But Jesus said, yeah, that's the same thing, man. If you're fantasizing about it in your mind, it's just like you did it. Like, don't you see? It's not just that you didn't do something. It's what was going on in your heart that was corrupt, so it's this, well, no, but I'm, I'm saved and he has to forgive me. What a low way to think. No, you're meant to be an agent for change, for the kingdom. And they say in New York City that one, you know, the Christian group I'm a part of that are a bunch of Wall Street people over there, they say the main problem most of our coworkers have is that they've never met Jesus. But they have met Christians. Woo. 
So be careful. We're representing the king, right? We're ambassadors, emissaries. <laughs> and then you got the carnal Christian that's a little bit above the avoiding hell Christian. And then you got the religious legalism that thinks that you're still bound by, you, you get a score from God based on how well you follow the rules. And that brings pride and you're, you're proud of how humble you are. That's religion. Well, you know, I have more verses memorized than you. What are you doing with them? How many people have you led to the Lord? Well, they're all just filthy sinners. Jesus never meant it, made anybody feel that way. So knowing it is important, but living it is way more important, right? And Holy Spirit has to be there to, to lubricate the truth of the word or else it becomes a hammer. Hearts ablaze. Boy, that looks better to me. We were talking about that last week and then the returning remnant. So that's kind of the picture that I just wanted you to have that it's, it's really on us. You know, not, not in a works mentality. It really isn't. I mean, as soon as you realize that he said, pick up your cross daily, you realize he's, he wants to work with us. But if we don't yield to it and we think we know better, then we're proud and, and pride is, and that haughty spirit, it goes before a fall, doesn't it? So, like I said, if, if I could just, we're in this amazing season on the church calendar that runs seven weeks from the resurrection to the day of Pentecost. Seven is a completion. Fifty days, seven weeks plus one, fifty days. That's called Jubilee in the Old Testament. You know about that? Right? And there's all these parallels of what happens in the 40 days that, he's, that he appears to people uh, from the resurrection to the time of his departure. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit falls, right? It's the same way that they celebrated it in the Old Testament. They celebrated Passover. We celebrate resurrection, coming out of, free, out of slavery into freedom. And then 50 days later, Moses received the law. So Moses goes up on the mountain and comes back with the law. Jesus goes up to heaven and sends down the Holy Spirit. On Pentecost. Which would you rather have? Let's stand up on that one. We quoted a lot. 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose the Son of Man came to destroy the works of the devil. Can you say it with me? For this purpose the Son of Man came to destroy the works of the devil. And then in John 20, he says, as the Father sent me, so I send you. So if he came to destroy the works of the devil, he's telling us we're supposed to destroy the works of the devil. And the more Holy Spirit has rule and reign over our lives, the more likely that's going to be to happen. Because my good ideas are not always God ideas. I just want God ideas. I learned that the hard way. Lots of good ideas, but never heard God say it. And we really need to be careful. Not to waste energy on, on a good thing that's not from him. Amen? So I'm here. You're here to destroy the works of the devil. That could be people on your job. It could be people in your family. Look, just focus in on this from the resurrection to Pentecost. That's 50 days, seven weeks. It's like this perfect number. Every 50 years, all the debts were forgiven. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, when he opened up the scroll, today... These scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing that I came to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up the wounds. I came to deliver people out of the bondage of sin. Today is the day of Jubilee. What about you? You can say that every day. You've got Holy Spirit living inside of you. Today is the day of victory when you look through that lens and you say, I'm not settling for less. I'm not settling for this low brow. Oh, well, at least I'm not going to hell. Wow. One guy called it vampire Christianity. Just enough of the blood to make the cut that when you die, you get to heaven. I don't want no vampire Christians in here. I want hearts ablaze that know the returning remnants. And if you're not, it could be my fault. Part of it is... It's like, well, if you're not happy with what's going on in your church, maybe you should fast and pray more, Pastor. Because you're going to have to give an account to God on how you took care of his people too, you know. You got that right. I, I live with somebody that, that would believe that too and remind me of that. And we, we work with each other, right? We, we submit 
to one another out of the reverence and fear of the Lord. So could you lift your hands? Lord, we don't want to be people that aim too low. We want to be people that wake up every day excited for what you're going to do in our lives. Excited that you've straightened us out. You picked us up, turned us around, set our feet on solid, rock-solid ground. That we're not on the sinking sand of this world's culture anymore. But we've been turned away from that and turned towards you. And not only did you change our mind and, and, and straighten out the crooked things in our lives, but you also gave us your spirit. The same spirit that created in Genesis 1 and hovered over Mary and, and hovered over Peter is the same spirit that we have. And we access that to a greater measure today to remind ourselves that we have a mission every day that we wake up is to serve you, destroy the works of the enemy, and be people who are sent like you were sent. While we're here, we're going to we're, we're be weapons of mass destruction on the enemy's camp in Jesus' name. Amen.